Cause of earthquake is extensive. Say for example, lot or uh, earthquake. So many people have died in, during the earthquake, right? It's a catastrophic loss. Tsunami. It's a catastrophic loss. So generally, in uh, insurance parlance, it is called cat loss. In short. So the first classification is catastrophic loss based on the extent of damage. When the damage is extensive, it is called catastrophic loss. The second classification is based on measurability in money terms. When the loss is measured, sometimes it is possible to measure in terms of money and sometimes it is not possible. Death of a person, a fire accident, a flood accident, loss to property, all these things can be measured in financial terms. So these are called financial risks. And there are certain things that cannot be measured in financial terms like loss of reputation, loss of goodwill. These cannot be measured in financial terms. So they are called non-financial risks. This is second classification. The third classification is based on the impact of socio-economic and political conditions on the risk. Right? When these are affecting the risks, they are called dynamic risk or static risk. Let's take the case of dynamic risk. Let's say, for example, uh, you have a garment factory. Right? So you are in the business of making fashion garments. So this year, particular fashion has sold so many uh, units. So you plan to sell the same thing next uh, holiday season same garments you make you produce so many quantities and then stock but when the next season comes suddenly you find the fashion has changed because of certain social conditions people have adopted new fashion then what will happen to all the product you made for that season it's a loss and this is because of social condition change in social condition right you have got certain export orders you have transported all the materials to the port. You are ready to export. Suddenly, government bans the export of that particular material, like what has happened recently on wheat. What happens? Because of some political decision, you have suffered loss. So, this is dynamic loss. Right? So, like this, socio-economic conditions on which you have no control, they keep changing the loss pertaining to the risk. So they are all dynamic risks. On the other side, what you have is static risk. They are not concerned with the, a fire accident in the factory. They are not concerned about what is happening outside the factory, socio-economic, political conditions. They have nothing to do. A road accident. None of these things have any relevance to the accident. So these things become static risks. Right? Now, what is happening when we are classifying these risks, we will also see whether these risks can be insured or not. When we spoke of catastrophic risk, the risk is insurable because they are all because of act of God perils like your earthquake, cyclone, tsunami, all these things flood, act of God perils and they become insurable. When you come to financial and non-financial risks, financial risks can be insured because it, uh, the loss can be measured in financial terms. Non-financial risks cannot be like goodwill loss, reputation loss cannot be insured. When we talk of uh, dynamic and static risks, dynamic risks are not insurable. They cannot be insured. Whereas static risks can be insured. This one needs to understand. Now coming to the fourth classification, it is based on who controls the risk. The classification is done as pure risks and speculative risks. For understanding pure risk, first let us see what is a speculative risk. You invest in stock market. When you invest in stock market, actually you are taking a risk. Now what is happening for the loss? Stock market, you may make lot of money you may gain actually in stock market or you may lose a lot of money. Both things can happen. This is called speculative risk. In a speculative risk, there is a possibility of gain and possibility of loss. And when such risks are 
taken they are called speculative risks speculative risks are not insurable they cannot be insured on the other side what you have is pure risk that is in a pure risk you only have loss there is no possibility of gain when you meet with an accident you only lose there is nothing to gain in an accident when there is a fire accident you only stand to lose nothing to gain in flood you only stand to lose nothing to gain so a pure risk is that risk where you only lose in financial terms and there cannot be any gain so the last classification is based on number of people involved in the rather number of people exposed to the risk <clears throat> so it is classified as fundamental risk and particular risk in a particular risk one or two few people are involved in the event like a two wheeler accident right like a car accident it's a particular risk when we say fundamental risk large number of people are involved in the risk event like an earthquake like flood so that is fundamental risk so this is how risks are classified and based on this fundamental risk and particular